I've done quite a lot of videos on this channel, you know, I'm approaching 250 now, which is quite a lot. And over that time, I've had, you know, a number of comments in YouTube videos, in the Discord server, and all sorts asking me what IDE slash editor that I use. Uh, there are people that are very pedantic about that. Uh, what fonts I use, what theme I use, etc, etc, etc. So in this video we're going to take, you know, a bit of a break from tutorials and we're just going to talk about, you know, the setup that I use and I'm also going to show you how to download things and how to set things up and how to, you know, this, that and the other. So, we start with our internet browser as we do with all good things and we go to code.visualstudio.com because I use Visual Studio Code. The codes, or oh, sorry, the, the the editor, I almost said ID, I almost angered the, the pedantic people. <laughs> Uh, the editor that I use is the editor that basically everyone uses nowadays. You know, this is the most popular editor as far as I can tell. It's just really nice, it's lightweight, it's extensible, it's good, it's open source, it's free. I think it's open source, I don't know. It's built by Microsoft as well, because you know, Microsoft do occasionally do open source things. Oh, it is open source, there you go. It literally says it's open source right there. And you can just download it here. On Linux... Uh, you want to do something like, let me just open the terminal real quick. You want to do something like, uh, do, 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 when it loads, there we go. sudo apt install code if you're on a, like a Debian based system, or I believe if you're on Arch, it might be getting slightly confused. It's dash s visual studio code bin, I think. I'm pretty sure. I might be slightly wrong about this. You do need paru though, because it's on the or. So just keep that in mind that if you stand a Pac-Man, it's going to be a different experience for you. Uh, I think Yum and Red Hat is all just, just install code, maybe. I don't know. I've never used those distributions, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's the editor that I use. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen it around before. A lot of people tend to use it, especially on YouTube. Uh, so the font specifically is Fear of Code Nerd Font. So when I say nerd font, I mean the the type of patched fonts you can get, well, I, I suppose a better explanation is that there is a group of people that patch a load of symbols and stuff into fonts. So they patch, you know, like git branch indicators and language indicators where they don't already exist and stuff like that. And it just means that you can use in your command line stuff like powerline uh, 9k or 10k uh, or starship or something like that and just make everything look a little bit nicer with symbols and all that. So what you can do this is going to work, there we go, is you can go to nerd fonts, or you can just google nerd fonts I suppose, and you can go to the home page which looks something like this, or if you don't have a dark reader extension it will look quite a significant amount brighter to you. Uh, and then you can go to downloads, and then you can select the font that you want. I use Fira Code Nerd Font, as you can see, let's see if I can zoom it in, it has something called ligatures. Now, if you don't know what ligatures are, they are sort of special character. Well, it's not really special characters. It's sort of special rules for certain characters to combine. So you may have seen it a lot, like an FFI, for example. That generally has a ligature in the font that you're talking about, which kind of joins them together a little bit and makes them just a little bit nicer to read. That is an example of a ligature. And in programming languages, ligatures are very useful because you can have something like an arrow or whatever the hell this is. I don't really know what you should have for that. But ligatures are really nice because they tend to just join characters together. A good example is an exclamation mark equals gets turned into an equal sign with a slash through it to represent not equals. That's a really nice one that I like and often forget to turn off and then people get confused at me in the comments asking, how the hell did you type that? <laughs> the answer is ligatures. It's all ligatures. I forget to turn them off sometimes. I'm sorry. So you can download that. It downloads a zip font. You can just install it as you would normally. I'm not going to do that because I already have them all installed. And then we can load into our IDE. Now this is going to load a project that I had already open. Which is fine because we could just use it for demonstration purposes. Once WSL wants to actually connect, let's bring this over. Let's not do what I just did. There we go. <clears throat> and as you can see, this is kind of what our ID looks like. So we have, you know, Visual Studio Code and we have the font already set up. Now to set the font, you can do control and comma. And then you can either type it here. So if in Fira Code, Nerd Fonts case, it's Fira Code, all one word, the nerd font. 
Uh, I haven't figured out a consistent rule as to how to get the name of the font. Sometimes it seems to be what the system understands. Sometimes it's the font family. Sometimes it's a very specific thing. I don't really know. If someone knows the rules that Visual Studio Code uses to get these fonts, then let me know because I haven't worked them out and Sublime's rules being different does not help at all <laughs> working that out. Alternatively, you can click this button up here to open the settings.json and you can type the same things in here. I personally, <clears throat> so I have the terminal set to the same thing as well. I personally have the font weight set to 500. So I think the default is more like 300, uh, but you can go from something like 100, which makes things very thin, to something like 900, which makes things very thick with three C's, not just two, three. Um, so that's, you know, there's a lot of things you can customize with the fonts. You can choose your own font. You can so, yeah, set this, that, and the other. I also have the font size to 16, which is non-default. It just works better for the zooms that I use. Um, I think I work with Visual Studio slightly bizarrely. But um, yeah, that's just, uh, like a general rundown of the fonts that I use and how to actually enable them in the IDE. Uh, the other thing, or one of the other things I want to talk about is the theme. So the theme you're looking at right now is called IU Mirage Boarded, and I think it's pronounced IU. I really have no idea. If someone knows for sure how to pronounce it, then do let me know. But what you can do to get it <coughs> is you can type IU into your search, and then it'd be this one, I think. Yeah, it's, it's the one with this icon by T by Yi. God, they really know how to, to to invent words that are difficult to pronounce, don't they? And then you just install it like that. And once you've done that, you'll get a prompt. But if you don't get a prompt, you can do Control shift p Preferences, Color Theme, and then you can see it actually gives you quite a few. So if I zoom in a bit, that might help people kind of see what's going on. So I have IU Dark, IU Dark Boarded, which I might actually try out. I'm pretty sure these have updated and they look a little bit nicer than they used to, so I might try this out. I am Mirage and then I am Mirage Boarded. So the difference between Boarded and Mirage is one, the uh, the line is on the other side of the tab. I don't know why that is. And two, the editor color is uh, made more distinct from the sidebar on the terminal on Boarded than it is on normal. Uh, so if you want to use exactly what I'm using, it's Mirage Boarded, but you can you know experiment or you can just have your own theme if you want to. A lot of people like Dracula. Um, I don't really understand why that is, but a lot of people do, so it's fine, I guess. We'll let them have their fun. Do I normally have it out here? I don't know. I don't remember how zoomed in or out. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm good at coding. Uh, so the other thing, one of the other things, I keep saying that. I will stop saying that, I promise. I next want to talk about icons. So the icons down the side here, they are either depicted by your theme or you can install others along with them. So I, ha I actually have a few installed. So you can go, you know, Control Shift P again to bring up the command palette and in preferences, file icon theme. You can just search for icon if you can't find it. And I have I again to be consistent with the rest of the theme. One other that I really do like is material theme icons. I think these are really cool because they, uh, you know, colored correctly. You know, you, you got the Python icon. I think darker, I know darker is actually not good. Uh, the Python icon is colored like that. You've got some like system uh, folders that have been uh, stylized differently, which is actually not something that IU does. That might be quite useful. You have all these different icons. So for example, you know, the git ignore, the YML, all this stuff. You know, it's just really nice to have icons, especially because the default icons are awful. I don't like these at all. Um, mainly because it's a weird color scheme. And part and well mainly because of these arrows. So the file icons are represented by arrows. I'd recommend going for ones where file well not that one either, but file icons that are represented by actual folders or folder icons. Sorry, that are represented by actual folders because it just makes it a lot clearer what's actually going on rather than this. You know, especially considering that the uh, the file tree is quite it's not very indented between levels, so it's just really difficult to work out what on earth is going on. I'm going to leave it as I for now, <clears throat> because I'm used to it and all that jazz. Uh, so that's pretty much everything in terms of actual, like, you know, theming and everything. Um, I'm just going to quickly run over some useful extensions uh, that you might be interested in. So if I just get rid of all these. Uh, so Rainbow Brackets is a really useful one. So you can see here, 
uh, especially on this bit here where it says custom formatter, you can see that the uh, these brackets are green and these brackets are kind of a magenta-ish color. And that is because these are nested brackets and this extension kind of makes it a lot easier to show which bits are encapsulating which. So otherwise, you know, these are all the same color and if you've got a lot of them kind of all at once, it can be quite difficult to kind of see. Uh, but rainbow brackets helps with that, which is quite nice. Then you've got indent rainbow. That's not where I wanted that to appear at all. Indent rainbow, which normally would uh, colorize all these indent blocks in a specific color. I have that turned off, but what I do have turned on is the um, the invalid indentation warning. So we can see here that you know this is an indentation error. The extension's picked up on it, and I've got a huge red bar telling me it's wrong. It's really useful if um, you know you're copy pasting something from another file, or if you just happen to screw up somewhere. <laughs> It's nice to, um, you know, it's it's nice to have that just to make it a little bit clearer exactly what's going on. Uh, then you've got Rainbow CSV. So these are more kind of for I still come on. There we go. Uh, these are more for like data. If I just bring up the tree again and in this one open up a CSV, you can see well I can find where they are. Oh yeah, uh, you can see that it it kind of colorizes the uh, the columns in a really cool way. So it, it just makes it a lot easier at a glance to see what's going on. So views is orange here, likes is lime, so that'd be this one. Videos removed from place is blue, that would be this one. Uh, dislikes and videos added to players, they are the same. They're the same purple. That's odd. I don't, I don't know. I remember stuff being like underlined and highlighted and stuff as well. I don't know if that's been removed because it doesn't seem to be doing that. Unless I changed the setting at some point, I'm really not sure. Um, but that's just a really nice uh, extension. Another very useful extension is Excel Viewer. So this kind of exists on the same sort of idea. It works for Excel documents and CSVs. And you can hit this button when you have a CSV open and it displays it as a table, which is really cool. And then you can sort things. You know, I already have things sorted. Let me take away this filter. So you can filter things. So I had it filtered, now I don't. And now I can sort things you know, by certain columns or I can set it by day, which it was before. It's just it's just a really nice way to navigate around data. Some other cool little extensions real quick are Git Graph, which can display the Git history of a project, uh, just in a really nice and readable way. And also there is one I don't have installed at the moment. Let's see if I can find it real quick. This one, there we go, restructured text syntax highlighting. It's really difficult to find, uh, but this one's quite nice. I wouldn't actually recommend this one because this installs a ton of things that don't work. It installs like a language server and all sorts. This one is just simple syntax highlighting like you would expect in Markdown or any other language. I'm actually going to install it while I'm thinking about it. Uh, I, I guess I haven't worked with any documentation since I, uh, since I reinstalled Windows. Um, but yeah, this one's a really good one to keep in mind if you're working with projects as well. And then of course you have, you know, the language channels like Python and Rust and everything, but VS Code prompts you to install those when, you're, um, when you open a file of that type. So that's sort of a general rundown, you know, it was a bit rambly at the end, but I wanted to kind of shout out some cool extensions. I might do a proper video on extension at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, a very short video turned into a 17 minute video. So I'll end it. If you liked it, let me know. If you have any questions about anything, uh, don't be scared to leave a comment down below. I promise I won't kill you. Of course, consider subscribing if you like this sort of content. And maybe I'll do more like it with VSC. If you have kind of more things you want to know about Visual Studio Code specifically, then that might be something to comment down below too, and I'll get around to it. Uh, I'm considering making a video on how I made my terminal look like this. Um, because I've had a lot of questions about that as well, so I, I will probably do that too. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now, £1 a month, and you can be on that screen too. Recently, I added memberships of £1 a month on YouTube memberships, and you can be on this screen as well. The join button's down below. And I will see you in the next video when I do either this terminal thing or the next Perfect Python. Sort of depends what order I can get things recorded in. So I'll see you for that.